Ah, what a beautiful day today, August 9th, 2020. I can only hope that an old man doesn't win the YCS I'm hosting later today, only to force me to play a deck less competent than Mystic Mine. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Well, you all knew this was coming. After completely exposing all the players in the 8th Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, Jeff Leonard decided to completely expose me as an untalented deck pilot by gifting me a list I was physically incapable of understanding. Presenting, with a deck list only very slightly worse than mine for Fluffle, Cubic Eldlich. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I can promise it'll be at least a month before you have to see another one of these. So here's the list and- OH! God! Oh, that is so hard to look at. Whew. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the breakdowns for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck. Dot com. Now let's Jeff in to Cubic Eldlich. This is the 45 I was originally handed by Jeff, and as much as it pains me to say it, the idea actually isn't that abhorrent. Cubic's widely known as a miserably inconsistent burn-slash-OTK deck that wins games on the back of Crimson Nova the Dark Cubic Lord. In the past, it had to play a monumental amount of unsummonable bricks just to facilitate this cubular chungus, but after a few new pieces of cube support, you can now occasionally make this monster on the back of spells and traps alone. Of course, continuous spells match up nicely with both Eldlich and Magician Souls, and the the way Dooza works with unification of the Cubic Lords can make for some quick link summoning and massive payoffs with access code, provided you're blinding second, of course. That said, we aren't likely to make any of that happen with the deck you just saw. Vjom, for example, is a miserable brick and a depressing waste of a normal summon, Ascension is an enormous bait for a mediocre payoff, and every time I see one of the lesser Cubics, my eye pops a blood vessel. By cutting the list to 40 and playing only the cubics we actually want to see in conjunction with Eldlich, we can flex their non-Euclidean frames into powerful Link bosses who have immediate impact, using Eldlich either to clear the way for our Cyburst Behemoth or to follow up with lethal damage and an unmatched grind game. As ridiculous as it may sound, I think we can actually scrape together something halfway playable from the dark, depraved reaches of Jeff's mind. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the cubes. Three Crimson Nova and three Dooza, followed by zero of the miserable unsummonables. Next is Triple Eldlich and Triple Souls, followed by an Apprentice. For spells, we're on three Karma, three Dharma, one Wave, an AoE Negate, three Eldland, one White, three Goods, and three Storm. For traps, we're playing two Unification, enough for a three Link Material Dooza chain, three Scarlet, three Conk, and two Hawk. In the extra, we're on Trinity, which we will never summon, Liba and Gustav, Pleiades, Abyss Dweller, Zeroboros, Boral Sword, Ceruya, Access Code, Appaloosa, Unicorn, Phoenix, Cerberus, Linkaribo, and Anima. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Guru. You know, a lot of the time when I'm playing Numeron Guru, I think to myself, oh, this deck is simply too fun! The combos are too intense! The interaction is too meaningful! Luckily for us, Dragoon is at the center of this Guru build. Our opponent's going to leave with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, drawing off the top. Yep, a Red Eyes Insight. They're going to get a copy of Red Eyes Fusion to hand before activating it to make Dragoon, a fun card that I'm sure you'll be losing to in the coming format. They'll set three and pass. We'll lead with a copy of Magician Souls, just fiending for hand traps or back row at this point. We'll activate Cursed Eldland and activate its effect, prompting an Ash Blossom from our opponent. Afterwards, we'll activate Eldritch's effect, but unfortunately hit a chainable piece of interaction, which means we won't be able to activate Magician Souls. As we activate the graveyard effect of Eldritch, they'll activate the effect of Dragoon, but no big deal, we are not done. We're going to normal summon a copy of Dooza and activate its effect, sending a unification. We'll go to Link Karibo and Nightmare Phoenix using Phoenix's effect to pop one of the back row. They reveal there can be only one, whew, glad we got that floodgate out of the way, as we special a Dooza from deck. We'll activate Dooza's effect, sending a unification again to go into Unicorn, and using our final unification to get our final Dooza. We'll send a Karma to Graveyard so we can, I don't know, have hand material for next turn, and make access code talker. We'll use its effect to pop the last back row before proceeding to the battle phase and getting over for 23. Things are looking okay, we 
we read Parody, and we're playing Eldritch. We'll get Scarlet Sanguine at the end of the turn, and our opponent will draw an Infip. They'll go ahead and set it before activating Red Eyes Wyverns' effect in the end phase, prompting an activation of Scarlet Sanguine from us. As they special back the Dragoon, I know the game is over. We draw for turn, and they don't have a card in hand, so we are free to pop what we like. We'll activate Eldritch's effect in Graveyard, summoning it to our side of the field, then Scarlet's effect to set a Conk, just in case. We'll proceed to battle phase and get in for well over lethal. Our second match is up against Unchained. Wow, isn't it such an amazing coincidence that the person responsible for pole position is also the person who pioneered Unchained as a serious competitive deck? Anyway, our opponent's going first, which might be a problem. We destroy a lot of things as part of our blind second strategy, and Unchained likes that. They're going to lead with a copy of Allure of Darkness, drawing off the top... Uh, <laughs> Lilith? Okay. I don't really... Oh, that's adorable. They're going to pop a chamber with a Rua, then activate Chamber's effect, activating the effect of Abominable Unchained Soul in hand to get Unchained Soul of dog shit from deck. Rage will make it onto the field, and we have to out it. We're going to lead with a copy of Magician's Souls, and what do you know, we have a hand that can actually summon Crimson Nova. We'll do that right now, and then activate Souls' effect. Our opponent will chain Rage, but unfortunately Crimson Nova is simply unaffected. We'll activate Eldritch afterwards, and normal summon a copy of Dooza. From here we can get off to the races, setting a unification, and using its effect to bring back a copy of Dooza. Next, we'll use Dooza's effect to send another unification as we make our way to Unicorn, putting the dog back in the deck because it's kind of difficult to get over. We'll summon our final copy of Dooza, then activate its effect in order to send from our deck to the graveyard a Cubic Karma, which will get us another Crimson Nova. We'll activate a Cubic Karma, not once per turn, by the way, and a Dharma in order to refill our hand before going for access code Talker. From here, we should be able to win. We'll proceed to the battle phase and attack twice with our copy of Crimson Nova, and then once with our access code Talker for lethal. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Dragon Link, the same variant that we lost to last time, so we're out for revenge. Unfortunately, they are going first. They're going to lead with a copy of Star Liege Safert, which they will use to get a White Dragon Wyvern Burster to hand. They'll activate Striker Dragon's effect for a Boot Sector launch before specialing the Wyvern Burster and going into a Romulus. As they add the Divine Lance to hand, I realize something's up. They'll activate Divine Lance and activate its effect in order to equip a Phalanx from deck. They'll activate Phalanx's effect to Special Summon itself, and then link those monsters away for a Link Cross. God, this card cannot leave the format soon enough. Next is a Synchro Summoned Martial Metal Marcher, also on the short list, specialing back the Phalanx and going into a Hauk of Fibrax. That'll summon a Vylon Cube from deck, perfect material for Herald of the Arclight, and adding a Smoke Grenade of the Thief to the hand. They'll make a Striker Dragon and an Elpy, activating Elpy's effect to summon a Brotar from deck, and activating Brotar's effect to get a Chaos Dragon Levianir. Afterwards, they'll make a Dillinger's Dragon and special the Chaos Dragon Levianir, tucking a card from our hand back into the deck. Next up is an Appaloosa for 4 and an activation of Saferd in Graveyard, followed by a Boot Sector launch summoning the Tracer from hand. From here, they can activate Dillinger's Dragon's effect and make a Union Carrier, quick launching out the last remaining Tracer, activating Smoke Grenade of the Thief, activating Tracer targeting the Smoke Grenade, activating Smoke Grenade's Graveyard effect, making Boreload, and ending on Buster Lock. God, I hate this. We'd have to draw something special off the top to make it happen, and unfortunately, we do not. So it's time for game two, and yeah, I've learned from the Fluffle set, we're going first. Our hand is quite good. We're going to lead with a copy of Cursed Eldland to get a Conk to hand, after which we will activate the effect of Dooza upon Normal Summon. Now that is met with a Cyframe Gear Gamma, but it's not as bad as it seems. It gives us a target turn one for the Eldritch in our hand. We'll go ahead and activate that now, pitching a Dharma to destroy the Gamma, then activating Eldritch's effect to bring it to our side of the field, and Cursed Eldlands to set a Conk to Grave. We'll set two, activate Dharma so we can get this copy of Dooza back for inevitability, then activate Conk at end step for a Scarlet Sanguine. Things are looking up. We'll pass it back to our opponent, who now has five cards to work with. They'll lead with a copy of Dragon Shrine, setting an Absurator Dragon. Afterwards, they're going to normal summon a Tracer and make a Striker. They'll activate the effect of Knock Division in hand, and I am being very patient with negation. They'll go for a Romulus here and a Knock Division, and they can't really profitably get Lance. Instead, they'll get Ravine and activate its effect, sending from deck to graveyard the Pendulum Dragon. Even that, the threat of interaction, was enough to stop the combo dead in its tracks. Our opponent does get to go for a Brotar as we destroy their field in their end step, but it's not too big of a deal. As long as we can clear that, we win. We draw an Eldritch for turn and normal summon a Dooza. It's met with an Infip. I just want to resolve this card. Okay, no big deal. We can link summon a Cerberus and activate its effect to destroy this copy of Brotar, then overlay for a Gustav Max, prompting the concession. So it's time for that all-important game three, and ugh, against any other deck, this hand would be killer. Against this one... It might be alright. 
Dooza outs Herald of the Arclight very cleanly, and Lightning Storm's a very powerful card, but getting both of them to resolve and stick on field is going to be a chore. Our opponent is going to lead with a copy of Quick Launch, summoning a Rocket Tracer from deck. That'll turn into a Striker Dragon, which will add from deck to hand a copy of Boot Sector Launch. They're going to bring back this Tracer with World Legacy Gar Dragon, followed by a Link Summon of Romulus and an add of Dragoonity Divine Lance. They'll activate Divine Lance's effect, summoning a Phalanx from deck, after using its effect, of course, and Link Cross hits the field. Stop me if you've seen this combo before. Out come the tokens and Martial Metal Marcher. It'll activate summoning back, ooh, the Tracer this time before they normal summon a Vylon Cube. They had not yet committed to a normal frustrating before going for Halka Fibrax for a Rocket Synchron. Next, they'll summon a Striker Dragon and an LP to get a copy of Brotar out of deck. They'll activate Brotar's effect, targeting itself to get a Levy near to hand. After that, they will link summon a Dillingerous, go into an Appaloosa and a Pisty, use Pisty's effect to bring back Tracer, and then bring back Dillingerous in the same breath. After that, they'll make the Levy near anything but Storm. Okay, well, it's not fantastic, but it's okay. They'll go for a copy of Union Carrier, and then, as always, Tracer away, the smoke grenade of the thief, <sighs> ending on a Bora Load and a Buster Lock. Now, we might be able to do it based on what we draw off the top of our deck, but it's got to be something fantastic, and unfortunately, Dharma isn't it. Okay, we'll lead with a copy of Dusa. It eats the Infip. That means we can at least walk over this copy of Herald, but unfortunately, without an Eldritch to follow it up, we can't accomplish anything. I'll activate Dharma in the negated column and concede. So, we're back with the deck, and... I mean, we lost to Dragon Link, but that's a feat anyone who loses the die roll can accomplish. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One... Dooza is a very interesting link climbing mechanism. Obviously, a 3-2 Garnet ratio isn't ideal, but it gets much better when you realize how easy it is to dump Karma. Two, the cubic cards have a lot of flexibility in terms of their use. Wave, for example, is occasionally a better Dark Ruler. And three, Eldritch is still extremely good. You can throw this big golden asshole in anything and it's suddenly tier 1.5. And the cons. One, you really do have to blind second with this build. Yes, theoretically you could set up a Link 4 on the play, but every competent deck on Earth can beat a 2 mat Appaloosa and an Eldritch you minus 8 to get onto the field. Two, it's obviously less powerful than Synchron Eldritch. Maybe this will change with the ban list set to be released on September 1st, but I kind of doubt it does unless Halka Fibrax is taken out behind the barn. And three, it won't bring the Pharaoh back, Kaiba. All in all, this is a novel take on a powerful deck, but it pales in comparison to the more competent and proven versions of the build. Congrats once again to Jeff for his win. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Blue Boy, Candyman, Crispy, DimSum05, Innercrest, King Magic Ruler, Meteor Mirage, Mike Carlotti, Rose Lapine, Seeker, Space Dandy 1993, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amir Elefandi, Alji Smarson Kevitsius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Candide, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kidd, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillerup, Don Coro, Distran, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gamer Games, Gavin Charlie Kowski, Gustavo Sicon, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jel Durado, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaiba Corp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurakaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence Lucas Gutis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meadow Edits, Meds for Feds, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskvark, Miuna Arashi, Moira Brown, Wolf, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Dolores, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Second, Sophie Forster, Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski, Zach McKee, Bleh, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blast It, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and Yuki A. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.